Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you all the books that I ended up reading in the month of April. So April is a very good reading month for me. I read a total of six books and they were kind of all over in terms of genre and rating and everything like that. So these are books. There's some in here that I'm really excited about. There were two five-star reviews, which I think is pretty good for just like one month. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So the first book that I ended up reading in the month of April is perhaps one of my most anticipated reads and it was Sunflower Sisters by Martha Hall Kelly and this is the third and final book in the Lilac Girls trilogy. So if you're not familiar with this trilogy it follows a family through different kind of major historical events and these are actually based off of real life people and their contributions to these wars. So the first book we follow Caroline during World War II. In the next book we follow Caroline's mother Eliza in World War One, and then in this case we follow I think like their great like aunts and like grandmothers during the Civil War which I thought was really interesting and I haven't really read anything from the Civil War so I was really much anticipating this. So I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. It was honestly amazing and I've always loved uh, Martha Hall Kelly's writing. She has an amazing ability to totally just grip you into these stories and these characters and this book was no different. We follow three different narratives as which is similar to Lilac Girls and Lost Roses. Um, so we follow, um, I think her name's Georgie. Yeah, we follow Georgie, who is um, part of like the Faraday Wo Woosley family. Um, and she's very ambitious. She wants to, you know, train as a nurse and, you know, actually help out in the you know, like war effort for the North. We follow a slave who is living on a uh, tobacco plantation. And then we also follow the slave's trip, um, owner as well. And all these stories are all in mixed and it kind of goes on from there like you don't know how especially with Georgie's character you don't know how she really fits in with the narrative uh, between the woman and her slave um, so you can kind of like like you're just really curious to see how these stories intermix and she does an amazing job of that and she also doesn't shy away from the horrors of this era particularly how gruesome these wars are and just how badly injured and you know how basically graphic these parts of history were and she doesn't also shy away from racism and the kind of a lot of the dialogue that we see in here is very reminiscent of kind of the white supremacy movement that we see kind of in modern American history so I think she does a good job at showing like these themes that you know we America tries to say that we're behind but they very much have always been present and prevalent in Kind of the fabric of American culture and I think she does a good job of not shying away from this and yeah I think she did a really good job at showing you know the slave experience and just having what they go through even though this woman is a white author in her author note she said she based kind of the slave experience um, from you know someone that she knew and so um, one of her friends grandmother was a slave and so she worked you know in collaboration with this other person to kind of get a very kind of you know accurate portrayal of this it's not no one own voices but I think the author did a good job at trying to be as accurate as possible from kind of the white perspective but yeah this book honestly was amazing like a five out of five stars like this whole trilogy I'm sad that it's over but I'm curious to see what this author will do next because I've loved her trilogy so much so the next book that I read was for a book club that I'm a part of with my lab mate and her friends and so for this month we ended up reading West with Drafts by Linda Rutledge. So the premise of the story is that it takes place in the late 1930s and it's loosely based off of the true experience of these two giraffes that were taken from Africa and they were being transported to the San Diego, I want to say, yeah, San Diego Zoo. And um, while they're like, and so they survived a hurricane getting into New York and then they had to travel basically from New York to San Diego to get to the zoo. And it was like this story literally captured the you know the world and the nation as people were following these giraffes kind of go across the country and they came a sign of hope especially during the great depression it kind of brought some hope and happiness and it kind of united the people to root towards something so this was like a very kind of big 
deal at this time period and so we follow this one guy named um Woodrow Will, Woodrow Wilson Nickel and so we follow him and he's very much homeless he's very much struggling with he's running from something from his past and he ends up being um following these giraffes and kind of taking them across country and so we follow this man when he's like over a hundred years old and giraffes are becoming extinct and so he knows his days are numbered and so he's recollecting what his experience was and he's writing for someone so we don't know who that someone is for but he's writing for someone um and it, he talks about how he fell in love and just how um, like, you know, his experience going across the country with these two drafts. And I liked it. I thought it was like an interesting story. I liked the themes of how animals really kind of know the meaning of life. They're really in tune to like, what is the purpose, you know, like, just kind of like, that kind of theme of animals knowing the secret to life and I really liked that part and just the human connections with you know other animals in the wilderness but I did find it to be really repetitive it was like one disaster after another and it got to the point where it's just totally unbelievable and just all this stuff like it was getting very hard to you know it was like I had to create some suspension of disbelief trying to really kind of go along with the story because it was just literally so repetitive in terms like every day these people had some you know major thing happen that it was just like okay we get it like it was a hard you know going from New York to San Diego but yeah it was just a little bit too repetitive and too unbelievable in terms of all these one thing after another that it just kind of got repetitive and boring but again I still liked the themes of this I like I said I really loved the theme of animals knowing the secret to life but yeah I gave it a three out of five stars it wasn't my favorite but there were things that I like and some things that I didn't like Next up, I ended up reading books two and three of the Shades of London series by Maureen Johnson, the first one being The Madness Underneath, and the third one being The Shadow Cabinet. So this is a series that me and my friend are reading for another book club, and I don't, like, this isn't the genre that I usually find myself reading, but, you know, can't really choose what I get to read in this one, like, this time around, because I chose the the last series so yeah this isn't really something that's my cup of tea so it's like I just take it kind of with a grain of salt reading it like I'm not expecting my life to be changed like reading Sunflower Sisters but it's kind of like a fun ride so this general premise of the series it follows this girl named Rory who ends up going to this boarding school in London and as she's there there's these strings of murders taking place that are very reminiscent of Jack the Ripper and it kind of goes off from there and it involves ghosts and all those things and the first book like I actually kind of enjoyed it was just a light fluffy read like I wasn't getting too much out of it but it you know it was enjoyable I gave it a three star rating like it was enjoyable and then the second book came around and it really had the sophomore slump it was just so bad like literally nothing happens until like the last 60 pages and it literally nothing happened for like the first 100 like 130 pages like no joke like nothing happened um or like I would say 200 pages actually for the first 200 pages nothing happens in the last like 60 or 70 is where it actually picks up so I did kind of enjoy the ending like where it ended but getting to that point was not a lot of fun so I gave the madness underneath two out of five stars and then the third book in this trilogy it did pick up a little bit um and so I gave this one a three I thought it like I thought this originally was a trilogy, but apparently there is a fourth book supposed to be coming out, and it was supposed to be coming out in 2018, and it's just fallen off the face of the earth. So I did like the ending of this. I think it does have a good villain in here, and I did, like, some parts were fun. I was really confused with some of, like, the fantastical elements in here, but yeah, it was just okay. Like, it was just, the second book was horrible, but the third book, you know, redeemed itself this storyline in us and I don't I don't know this isn't really my cup of tea so take what I'm saying with a grain of salt but yeah this is just a meh series like it's very forgettable 
And on a more positive note, I ended up reading two pages in the, or two books in the Inspector Gamache series. So I first ended up reading The Beautiful Mystery and then I ended up picking up How the Light Gets In. And so this is quickly becoming one of my favorite crime series of all time. I love it so much. I've been talking about this series for so long because I want to get caught up with the series by the end of the summer and I think it's very doable. But Basically the premise of this series in general is it follows Inspector Gamache who is head of the homicide department um, in Quebec and a lot of his murders are very much interconnected with this t small town called Three Pines and it kind of goes off from there. It has a very much Gilmore Girls feel to it where there's these unique cast of characters in this town and just having that found sense of family and all that. So. I really love it so um, I will say though that The Beautiful Mystery was probably my least favorite out of the books that I've read so far. I think this is book 9 and 10 or 8 and 9, I don't remember at this point. But this is the only one so far that does not involve anything from Three Pun. So Inspector Gamache and Buver, I think is how you say his partner's name, they end up trying to solve a murder that takes place in a monastery with some monks. And it was just kind of boring. I feel like what is really unique with this series is again, the unique cast of characters, especially when dealing with Three Pines. Um, but the last half of the book was just just tremendous and it just like it was so much stuff building up for this one character that I was just literally shocked with the ending of it and I was just blown away but the kind of mystery part was just a little bit boring especially because a lot of the monks don't talk and the characters can't really tell the difference between some of these characters so it wasn't that exciting and the kind of murder aspect of it was just not as thrilling as it has been in the other ones so I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars like I said I was not really enjoying this one at all until like the last maybe 50 or so pages where we had that tremendous like character um arc kind of happening um so it did redeem itself with this one it's probably like my least favorite of the series but the ending is very critical in terms of setting up this one which was chef's kiss this one you can tell i think especially with these series you can tell there's certain books that the author is building up towards so this is one that an author, like this louise penny was building up for over many editions of like her series throughout the series this is like the overarching narrative that she was trying to get to and it did not disappoint i don't want to spoil anything with this one because i feel like part of the beauty and like the kind of enjoyment of this is experiencing it throughout all the books but oh my gosh you guys this one was amazing there is this murder that takes place with this woman who is friends with Myrna who's one of the characters in Three Pines and um, she's it kind of goes off from there but there's this other kind of subplot which takes place kind of is more of the kind of main narrative of this one with Gamache and some of the political side of the I think it's Suarte I think is how you pronounce it in French but like the police department that he's a part of like the politics and things that were a problem last time and uh, I'm trying to be as vague as possible but if you read this you know what I'm talking about but like this honestly was beautiful just so many of the themes that are relevant throughout kind of persistent throughout all of the books is how even though there is all this dark and you know death and just brutality of what's going on there is still like as the title said like there is still light in there and it's talking about how even with all this darkness there is still some light um that gets in throughout the cracks and I really like that I love that theme of just like you know light versus dark you know friendship love like all those things and this one was truly amazing like it gave me a book hangover like I went to pick up a book um, after this and I've read about 50 pages and I haven't read a book in like three or four days now so this one was honestly I still am processing everything like I literally read the last like 200 pages in one day like I couldn't put it down that's how amazing this one so if you are looking for like an, a tremendous crime series I cannot you know stress this enough this series is fantastic so that's it guys I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below what some of the books that you read this month are and all of that fun stuff so yeah thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time 
Bye, guys.